Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about variable valve lift and variable valve timing. And to help explain this we have Charles, Mr. Humble Mechanic, Hello. Uh, who brought some VW parts, some Audi parts, uh, to help explain this. So what is in front of me right now? So these are camshafts and a cam bridge out of an 09 Audi A4. This is almost the exact same setup that you'll find in the 15 and up Mark 7 GTIs. We have our exhaust cam with variable valve lift and we have our intake cam with variable valve timing. Sweet, so yeah, as you mentioned, we've got our intake right here, intake cam, exhaust cam, uh, and the basics, we're gonna start here with the variable valve lift, which is on the exhaust side. And basically what you're doing, you have two different cam profiles. So you have this higher cam profile, and then you have a little bit lower of a cam profile, and you have an individual system for each cylinder. So you can move this back and forth. It's on a spline, so you can move that and each individual cylinder has its own control. Right. And so, Charles, can you kind of explain the details of how this system actually moves back and forth to change that cam profile? Right, so like Jason said, these are essentially sleeves that are splined to the camshaft. We have two solenoids that will control this sleeve. One solenoid will pull it one way, the other solenoid will pull it the other way. When the solenoid is activated, the pintle will come down and ride in this channel and it'll actually slide that sleeve over to change the profile of the camshaft that the rocker's riding on. So if we are riding on our high lift, this solenoid will activate, it'll pull it over, and that'll allow us to ride on our low lift. When we're ready to go back to high lift, this solenoid will activate, pulling it the other way and allowing us to ride on the high lift profile of our cam. And of course, this will have two valves per cylinder, so you'll have a rocker here as well as a rocker here. This is a pretty narrow rocker to be able to ride on both of those profiles. Yeah. And so kind of the interesting thing about this is that it's on the exhaust side and not the intake side. You have one cam profile here on the intake side. On the exhaust, the reason uh, for this, this is a turbocharged engine. And so you've got uh, pressure pushing in air. It's fairly easy to get that intake charge, uh, but it's then difficult to get all that air, all that exhaust out. Right. And so once you get into the higher RPM at higher levels, loads and you're burning all this air and fuel, you want to open these exhaust valves a little bit more so it's easier to get that air out and you can create more power. Less losses, more power. Uh, so that's kind of the beauty of this VVL system. Right, this will also improve throttle response a little bit and uh, makes for a pretty fun car to drive. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Now, just because this engine doesn't have this on the intake side doesn't mean you couldn't do that. You could have two different cam profiles and use a very similar system on the intake side and you'd get that benefit of getting in more air once you're at higher RPM, uh, higher loads, uh, so you can make more power. Um, and you can also change the duration with the two cam lobes. Um, so you were saying you noticed, you know, these yeah, it's, are... It's not just lift. We're not just raise, opening the valve more. We're also opening it sooner. And we're actually closing it a little bit before we would on the low lift, okay. but not very much. So the duration is actually longer as yeah. well. Okay, so much more time and lift for all that air to get out uh, for efficiency and you know not, not losing all that power and getting too much pressure going out your exhaust. So very cool. Yeah, and that's all ECM controlled. So the engine computer is going to do that based on the scenario the vehicle is in. It, in a lot of ways, knows better than most of us sure. on what it wants from the engine. Definitely me. Definitely, Definitely knows me. better than me. Yeah, I just poke at computer and beep, try and, boop, beep. yeah. So moving along to the intake side, uh, this, as you can see, just a single cam profile. And what we have here is our variable valve timing. And so if I hold this stationary and you can see the chain won't move. And we can advance it or pull timing back and retard the timing. So as you can see on the intake, there is only one cam profile. And so all we're doing is, let's say, you know, you have your cam profile open close. You're just shifting when it opens and closes back and forth. And that's all you're doing. The cam profiles remaining exactly the same. So we're gonna talk about why you would wanna shift when the intake valve opens and closes. Uh, but first, let's take a look inside and see how this works. So the variable valve timing is all based on oil pressure. When the profile wants to change one way, the well will fill up here and shift this way. If it needs to shift the other way, there's another port and it'll shift this way. And then when it wants to bleed down the pressure, there's actually a release or a relief hole right down here at the bottom. Then this oil will fall down the timing chain side and it'll reset back to zero. Cool, so all you're doing, I mean, you've got this little 
you know, complicated chamber that's sending out oil and all you're doing is filling either one side with oil or the other side with right. oil. They both have a port and then you can drain it out the back there. That's it. It's all controlled. There's actually uh, on the timing cover, which goes in front of this, there's a solenoid that goes there. This is a spool valve, like you said, that has different chambers of, and ways to pass oil through this. There's actually another part to it right here that you guys don't need to know about, so I and don't know why also, I picked it up. And it's also, you know, probably worth mentioning that when you're thinking about this, this gear is remaining stationary. I mean, obviously it's spinning, right. but the, the cam is rotating in relation the, to it. The actual shaft is rotating, not the cam gear. So this is more what it would look like if you could get in there and see it in action. So now we're going to talk about why you want to do this, why you want to change the valve timing. And so we're going to start with the example of a late intake valve closing. So we're closing our intake valve later than usual. So why would you do this? Well, when you do that, that means your cylinder is going to be starting to go back up to compress that air and your intake valve is still going to be open. So you're going to push some of that air fuel mixture back out into the intake manifold. Now there are some pumping losses associated with that where you're going to reduce those pumping losses because you're now charging your intake manifold. But really the main thing you're doing here is you're controlling how much air and fuel you have in that combustion chamber and in doing so how much uh, combustion you're going to have, how much you know power you're going to make and so you can reduce the temperature uh, of that cylinder by using less air and fuel. And so by reducing that temperature, you're gonna have less NOx emissions. So the common theme of all these different scenarios of kind of choosing, do you open the intake valve early or late, or the exhaust valve, do you, you, know, do you close it late or early? Uh, the common theme with all of these is gonna to have to relate to emissions. Right, that's how, that's how we look at it is, and, and it's mostly done by controlling temperature and therefore controlling NOx emissions. So Jason, why would you close the intake valve early? <laughs> well, Charles, let me tell you why you close the intake valve early. Uh, this really has to do with situations where you're basically just idling or at super low load. So what's happening when you're just sitting there idling is you really don't need much air or fuel to keep this engine idling. And so you'll close that intake valve early and effectively what you're doing is reducing the amount of pumping losses you have right. because that piston's trying to pull in air and fuel you get enough, you have enough for what you need to just idle the engine, and then you close that intake valve early, it continues to go down, and you're no longer pulling on that vacuum, and then you would have more pumping losses. So from an efficiency standpoint, it's just a smart thing to do uh, when you're sitting there idling to close the intake valves early. So Jason, why would you open the intake valve early? Well, Charles, let me tell you why you'd open the intake valve early. So this means you're on your exhaust stroke, so you're pushing out that exhaust gas, and now you're opening that intake valve. So what you're doing is you're pushing some of that inert gas that exhaust back into your intake manifold and this is kind of similar to the principle of like EGR why right. you would use an EGR system right. so that inert gas is in there that comes in you're controlling the temperature of combustion chamber once again uh, to reduce NOx emissions it's all about the NOx all about the NOx yep so Jason why would you change the time when you close your exhaust valve well, Charles, let me tell you about closing exhaust valve. So the important thing here, once again, comes back to NOx emissions. So if you close the exhaust valve early, what you're doing is trapping some of that exhaust, that inert gas in the combustion chamber. And then when your intake stroke occurs, you still have some of that inert gas in there. And thus, you know, you're gonna have uh, lower combustion temperatures and lower NOx emissions. Uh, the other side, if you wanna close it later, of course you can get all of that exhaust right. gas out of there so that you can fill it completely with fresh air and fuel and get more power. Now, obviously you don't wanna open the <laughs> exhaust valve early. That's during your combustion stroke. Uh, right. So you'd just be sending power out your exhaust and shooting flames, which would be cool, but you wouldn't be making I, any power I, out it your is, wheels. It is the peak of inefficiency. And that's where like combining these two together really gets interesting with lift and timing because you can control way down way way down and what you're trying to get super out of your down. engine super down <laughs> out of your engine well thank you all for watching and Charles thank you uh, once again for hosting me in your lovely garage Absolutely. and always supplying these great parts uh, it's always a pleasure and if you're not you should definitely check out humble mechanic on YouTube I'll include a link I'll put it over his face oh, uh, yes. so that your face is blocked out and you should click that and subscribe to his channel and uh, if you're not already subscribed to mine, you should be. And there's a bell now on YouTube. Uh, have you heard about no. this? You gotta click the bell, you gotta ring oh, the bell. Give the you bell do a little have to ring ding. so that ding. you get notifications. Uh, Otherwise you're like subscribed, but you're not actually like subscribed. It doesn't tell you when new stuff is out.